This video is the product of the Functional Cranial Release Research Institute. For difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, visit functionalcranialrelease.com. So I want, to paint a, I want to paint a picture for you guys here. Mm -hmm. So imagine that you walk into a room, and as you're walking into this room, your eyes are going to lock on a target in the room. And it might be a doorknob. And for a moment, as you're walking into that room, your eyes lock onto that doorknob and pursue that doorknob as your body's in motion and that doorknob's still. Mm -hmm. Then your eyes are going to do a second type of an eye movement, which is a saccade. And you may saccade towards a picture in the room. Mm -hmm. And for a moment, you're going to be pursuing on that picture. Mm -hmm. So your eyes are constantly doing this dance of saccade and pursuit, okay? So we had talked about with particularly patients with Parkinson's disease, what you'll see is you'll see they have something called an omnipause intrusion, okay? When we take and look at these um, graphs with a saccadometer, we're going to see these brassiere signs. We're going to see these, these dips, okay? And so what's happening is when person's looking from one target to another, these omnipause neurons are coming in and they're inhibiting that saccade. So the eyes are going to move from one target to another, but then they're slowed down from an om omnipause intrusion. This is coming from the substantia nigra. Mm -hmm. Okay? So imagine that I'm not able to keep my eyes on a target, which is what omnipause neurons allow me to do. Omnipause neurons allow, and they inhibit saccades naturally mm -hmm. so that we can lock on a target long enough so that we can do something called build collicular maps. Mm -hmm. Okay, and these are grids of our environment. So you have to have good intact omnipause neurons in order for us to keep this gaze, you know, these, the gaze fixated in one spot. And what happens is the eyes, the location of the eyes on targets, when you foveolize to a spot and you lock onto that, you build a retinotopic map that then updates into the collicular maps. And our collicular maps are our grids of our environment and our body. And so when you don't have good collicular maps, a lot of times patients won't feel grounded, you know, and you'll see an expansion of their deep tendon reflexes. So you'll, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll tap their knee and like they might have a jerk. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of patients like that. You'll, you know, you tap their shoulder and their whole body kind of moves. Mm -hmm. So it's real common. We see this with a lot of patients with traumatic brain injuries, Parkinson's, a lot of different brain-based injuries. We see their, their, their collicular maps aren't really good. Mm -hmm. And these people are, are, are very poorly managed in the medical model because Doctors don't really, A, know what to look for, and B, they don't know how to treat it. But the, the fact is these are really, really easy to treat, and it's very easy to get people to remap their grids. You just have to get them, A, being able to do gaze holding, right? Mm -hmm. And you have to get them to be able to, um, to do um, um, gaze holding exercises are like one of the primary aspects. But to saccade to memorize targets and then hold that is, is really key. So one of the things I found to really help with this is a combination of gaze holding exercises where you're taking a, a spot, and usually we use dot patterns, and you're moving the head while you're keeping the eyes fixated on that, on that spot, okay? So this is gaze holding, okay? You got vertical and horizontal, all right? The other thing that I found good success with is the um, right and left brain activity um, videos that I'm going to send you one where the dot is going from one point to another and your eyes are making micro saccades. Mm -hmm. So the point when you start to get to build people's collicular maps is you want their targets to be fairly close together and you want to expand that as they get better. Okay, so you're going to have them, that's why these micro saccades with this is both good for 
stimulating one side of the brain because the dots going in a micro saccade one way and then are pursued the opposite way. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned before, the pursuit is going to be the same side of the brain that the pursuit's moving, and a saccade is going to be the opposite. The way that the saccade's moving, it's going to be the opposite brain. Mm -hmm. So like a right brain is going to create a left saccade. A, a left pursuit is going to be a left brain activity. Okay, mm -hmm. So we use, we use these micro saccades, and another one is what I call eye pinball. And I have a sheet that I created that basically has this number system on it. And you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So these are memorized targets. And so you'll have the patients go and go from one to 50, and then back from 50 to one. And this actually does very, very well for not only helping to build the strength of saccades, and like for instance, your saccades are weaker to the left. So what I might do is start you in the middle and maybe have you do one or two in the middle and then one or two off to the left. Because mm -hmm. you're going to be building your left saccades a little bit more than the right to even you out a little bit. Follow? Yeah. Uh, one or two to the left. Okay. So it might be like a one to one where I have you going doing them just centered, mm -hmm. and I might have you move this off to the side just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So if you find someone that has a weaker weaker eye muscles on that are going to one side versus the other, you can actually use this eye pinball mm -hmm. where, the, where the sheet is off to the side just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it works really, really, really well. So this is another uh, exercise that I, I think I'm gonna have you get. But, so imagine, imagine that, that because you've got, you've got a resting nystagmus, and you're not holding gaze really well on the right side. So if you're walking through a room, you lock onto the doorknob, your eyes slip off of that target. When your eyes slip off that target, you don't know where your body is at that point of time, and so your balance is off. Okay. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you're going to have to have an equal and opposite reaction with your neck muscles because you're locked onto that spot and then your eyes s glitch off, you've got the vestibular ocular reflexes, it's going to have an equal and opposite reaction, and then your eyes are going to refixate back to the knob and it's going to hit again. That's where you start to get this dystonic issues with these people's necks. So a lot of these people come in, they have a lot of spasm in their necks and their backs, and it's basically the noise coming from these reflexes that the body's trying to create to bring them back to neutral. Mm -hmm. These glitches. Mm -hmm. And so these cervical dystonias are really common. We see them with a lot of our neurodegenerative cases with their brain as well as TBI. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm treating a really interesting case right yeah, now. TBI a, a is? Traumatic brain injury. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm treating a really interesting um, case right now. It's a, it's a child with a tick. Mm. You know, and, and you start running into the same types of issues. These ticks are showing up in his eyes and his face. And, you know, you're getting an equal and opposite reaction to the neck muscle. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's starting to, he, and he's got expanded clicular maps. So that's like a big thing that I'm doing with this kid is I'm getting him do, you know, the pinball. I adjusted him on one side and then the next day after the first visit, the mom said his ticks were quieter this morning than I, I, ever, I can remember in a long time since this started. So it can be that impactful for these cases. And then if you're treating patients that, that come in that have a lot of dizziness, they don't feel grounded, um, they, you start to explain these concepts to them and they're like, that, that's exactly how I feel. No one's ever been able to really explain that to me the way that you have. Mm -hmm. And you start to get them their grids back in line they feel grounded, they feel present, they feel connected, they, they know where their body is, their representation of their body is solid in their mind, in their brain. So their, their coordination's better, the brain doesn't have to work on overload. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about how hard the brain has to work mm -hmm. when all these things aren't firing properly because you're trying to compensate for all this stuff and that's where you get all the fatigue. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope you've enjoyed the material in this video. I want nothing more than to help as many people as I can. And you can help me do that by liking this video at the end and even sharing it with your Facebook friends. 
because you never know if you might help me to change someone else's life. Hi, this is Dr. John. Thanks for joining me. If you or a loved one suffers from difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, send them to functionalcranialrelease.com. You can contact me by phone or email me at askdrjl at gmail.com. And remember, if healing is possible, consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now. Functionalcranialrelease.com.